Welcome back on Gauss series videos, I'm Screech93, the co-founder of the project. In this video I'm gonna discuss some topic about the campaign of Gears of War 4 and some questions we have about it, waiting for new informations about Gears of War 5. Let's begin with the focal point. With the release of the games, the comics and the novels, the importance of the emotion as a crucial issue for the story of Sarah has been clarified. Since its discover and further with the light mass process created by the scientist Helen Cooper to turn this substance into fuel, the emotion became the reason of the longest human conflict of the history, the Pendulum Wars, 80 years of war that hearted deeply the population of the planet. For the inhabitants of the Hollow, however, the emotion represented a dire threat for their survival because of the pathogen contained in it that gradually started infecting all the species. The emotion forced the Locusts to find a solution, first by fighting the subject infected, the Lambent, then emerging from the ground to kill the humans and live on the surface of Sera. We wonder how is it possible that the whole vehicle in motion base to still work during the campaign of Gears of War 4, the King Rev and the motorbikes, even the old and rusty Marcus pickup. The cure plan by Adam Phoenix should have destroyed all the particles of the motion, so what kind of alternative energy are they using? Talking about energy and resources, our question focused on the DBs. After Gears 3, the population of Sera was at its lowest. The nature was suffering the effect of the pathogen, and there weren't any kind of natural resources available. How do they manage to start producing a huge quantity of intelligent androids, the DBs, that are far away from the technology of the powerful and rich coalition of order governments? Are the DBs the creation of a single man, Demon Baird? Is it possible that Adam Phoenix put some projects for an alternative energy in the data disk that he gave Baird in Gears of War 3? It's possible that the scientists, knowing the terrible effects of the cure, decided to work on a new plan to restart the society. Otherwise, it would have been really an asshole by asking Marcus and Dania to enjoy their lives in the future. It's interesting to imagine that Adam Phoenix had worked on a reconstruction plan with other brilliant minds on Azura, with new technologies, alternative energy, new system of buildings that led to the creation of the settlements. Maybe also vaccines to contrast the effect of the pathogen on the human organism as the infertility. Even if the DBs can be easily justified, we really don't understand the sense of the fabricator. In which way this sort of machine can create from nothing every tools a human could need? How can it create weapons, batteries and any other item from the nowhere? It seems to be just a multiplayer feature put with force in the campaign. Sera is not the Earth, so it doesn't share the same limits, but the fabricator is completely nonsense for us. With these machines, humans could have ended the Pendulum Wars in a few months, instead of 80 years. Moreover, we didn't appreciate at all the use of the barricades in the campaign. The single-player mode should be far more realistic to improve the empathy. It's ridiculous to see the protagonist carrying the barricades as holograms attached to the belt, until he plays them. We can accept this kind of choice only in the multiplayer. Did you notice that in Gears Judgment the character physically pick up the turrets and put them in a specific point? Why did the developers decide to make a backstep in Gears 4? Maybe to avoid creating specific animations for the campaign? Let's go on talking about the new coalition of order governments. Although the developers promised us we would have known more details about the treason of JD and Dell, there are really few informations in the game. After the defeat of the Locust, in a not well-known moment, the survivors decided to found a new COG. We don't know exactly who is part of this new group, considering that Goraznia has had a good relationship with the COGs after the events on Vectes. For now, we just know that Prime Minister Jean and her predecessor introduced more and more severe laws during the years, transforming and controlling the lives of the citizens. Some groups of dissidents decided for all that reasons to live away from the cities, 
following their own rules, tired of the promises of a government that disappointed them for years. At Settlement 2, the different ideologies of the groups collided, and after a mysterious accident, Dell persuaded James to leave the COG. But what happened really at Settlement 2? Did Jean engage the DBs to stop the rebellion? Why the treason of JD Phoenix is so compromising for the new COG? Recently, two interesting character skins have been released, Lieutenant Phoenix and Lieutenant Walker. Jean uses to call JD her lieutenant, as to underline the fact that JD is very important for the COG. In a period of peace, the military rank of the young Phoenix is probably just a way to recruit more soldiers, using the notoriety of the legendary war hero Marcus Phoenix. Maybe JD and Dell realized that they were just puppets in the hands of an authoritarian politician, and they decided to end with that life. It's probable, however, that the government has also omitted many details to make the population ignorant of past events, which is why Marcus decided to leave and repeatedly asked his son to not join the militia. The omissions in the campaign of Gears of War 4 are particularly interesting for us. In the prologue, Jin holds a commemorative speech for the 25 years after the end of the Locust War, but she doesn't mention many important figure that had a crucial role in the war. We wonder, is that the developer's decision to speed up the summary of the previous events, or the new trilogy will tell us that the COG continues with a non-transparent policy, hiding the questionable choices made by president administrations? Let's start from Richard Prescott. He ascended to the government in a critical moment and always followed the hardest way to give humans a hope. Instead of jail Adam Phoenix for having hided the truth, he saved his life and brought him to Azura to work on a cure against the pathogen. In addition, he has had a safe place to live, but he preferred to stay with his citizen to defend the city of Jacinto, a hero on balance but his figure will not be remembered by next generations. In the same way, Adam Phoenix has influenced the political history of the COG as a military scientist, but the merit for the definitive end of the Locust War has gone to Marcus and his squad. Actually, the death of the Locust was a collateral effect of the cure that was planned to destroy the pathogen. Jean focuses on the Pendulum Wars and the Locust War, but she doesn't spend a single war for the emotion. We know it was the principal cause of the conflicts of past century, but her speech simplifies a lot what really happened. In the final sequence, then, you can't see a single lament when the Ray of the Cure arrives, but we all know that Endelgate was surrounded by the infected Locust. For last, Jean doesn't say anything about Queen Mira, probably the most important figure of the past conflict a human creature that ruled on a monster's army and led it in a war against their own species. Actually, there is a reference to Mira in Gears 4. When Reyna has been taken off from the throne of the swarm, she gave to her daughter Kate her necklace, letting us discover that the mother of Reyna is actually Queen Mira. That creates a new line of descendants alive. Let's continue with the reasoning, if Mira is the mother of Reyna, who is her father? If you have read the novel The Slab, you'll know that Mira asked Adam Phoenix to help her during the war between Locust and Lambent. In these years before the E-Day, the Queen and the scientist spent a lot of time together, and Adam was already a widower. When he talks about Mira in the novels and in Gears 3, he reveals an affection for her. We think it could be Reyna's father for this reason, but he probably didn't know that. During the attack at the village, it's clear that Reyna is aware of the nature of the enemy. Just before being captured, she looks at the necklace because she made the connection between Locust and the Swarm. Does it mean that she perfectly knows her origins? Will she have remained with her mother after the emergence day? Maybe Mira wanted Reyna to take her place, in case she has died during the war, to guarantee a leader to the Horde. After the death of the Locust, Reyna could have decided to join her species and have a family with Kate's father. Anyway, her DNA is important for the Swarm. We know that because she had been treated differently after the kidnapping. 
they have placed there on the throne and connected to the common mind. The reason is still a mystery, but it's evident that the swarm will try to capture the other descendants of Mira still alive, that is Kate. Talking about the new enemy, all the players will surely have asked themselves who or what is the swarm? Unlike the Scion, born from crystallized corpses of the Locust, the Drones and Juvis are nothing but a forced mutation of human beings. In fact, through the Snatchers, the people of Serra are captured and put into pots that slowly consume them to give life to the Juvis. To complete the evolutionary process, these creatures sneak into the hives of the swarm to mature to the form of drones. From that moment, they are ready to fight and follow the orders of the common mind that guides them. This is more or less what we know about the new enemy, but there's a series of questions about it. Why do carriers and pouncers look so much like snatchers, even if they have completely different purposes? Why do the creatures of the swarm try to kill the protagonists, if their purpose is only to capture them and use them to create new members of the army? The crystals on Sion's body are related in some way with the emulsion that infected the Locus body and its countermeasure? Which events led to the birth of these creatures and to the mutation process of human being into Juvie? Which role does the character of Akon play in all of this? In the comic saga called The Rise of Rum, you can see this mysterious character working on genetic mutation experiments on humans, captured on the surface some time before the E-Day. Akon seems even to be the creator of most of the hollow beasts like Shibolet. The Coalition is trying to build a new deepening on the past to give coherence to the new saga started with the fourth chapter, introducing very charismatic characters like Akon and Jermot. The only thing we are quite sure about is that the Deepies will become part of the new army. In Gears 4, the gimmick of misunderstanding was exploited to introduce robots as enemies, but in Gears 5 things will work out between Jin and the protagonists. For this reason, the Coalition introduced the scene in Act 5, where Jin's robot is hit by the quills and connected to the common mind. We think that a large part of the Cox army will be connected and maintained as an enemy. We only wonder if there will be some hybrids, half organic and half artificial. Among the enemies of the next chapter, there may be also other crystallized species. Swarmak was probably the only surprise not anticipated by the trailers. Who would you like to see in Swarm version? A new type of corpser, the return of the blood mounds, or the boomers, or maybe some mutated rivers. We wonder instead what fate did the Cantus have, never seen among the infected creatures and therefore the only probable survivors of the Locust species. The other two Trinity Worms could also play a key role in the plot. Finally, if we are right about Akon, the Queen's Council may be still partly alive and well, and we still don't know why, but we see a connection between Akon and Nile Samson of New Hope. Whether it's him after the mutation, basically he was a geneticist. Speaking of the good guys, if for JD, Dell and Kate there's not much to discover before the events of Gears of War 4, we would like to know some details about the lives of the Delta during the 25 years of peace. Having decided to put them all back to start a new saga, we would like to understand what happened to them in all this time. Let's start from Marcus and Dania. After the war, they worked on the disposal of the Locus corpses, then they moved to Stroud Estate and started a family. We believe that Anya, being barren, couldn't have children. Anyway, James Dominic arrived. But we find out that a few years after the birth of JD, Anya has died. What happened to her? Did she get ill after a forced pregnancy? Certainly, she wasn't killed by some enemy in the period of peace. We are very sorry that such an important character has been set aside. Demon and Sam became a couple after the end of the war and Dom's death. It was evident that those two would have engaged sooner or later. We wonder, however, if they also made a little paired. 
Who knows if in Gears 5 a girl or a boy will appear with the same temper of the parents? The appearance of the cold train instead left us baffled. After years of peace, his life seems to be unchanged at all. We know through a collectible that he wanted to create trash ball teams composed by DBs. And that's all. Apparently, he decided to age over Baird's garage. We hope he had done something important after the end of the war. Hoffman is still alive and well after two wars. Unfortunately, it seems he had lost his partner Bernie, since we can't see her at the ceremony. Now that Victor is old and alone, will he still have an important role in the saga or will he remain a side character? We certainly don't want to see him going around in a wheelchair armed with a mortar. An external support role would be fine for him. Jace, Alex and the other supporting characters have not been named in Gears 4. But if you pay attention, it seems they are behind Jean at the ceremony. Looking closely at this guy, he looks like Corporal Stratton. This red-haired girl could be Alex. While this tattooed man could be Pat Selton. Comrade in arms for Hoffman, Marcus and Dom both during the Pendulum Wars and the Locust War. Knowing that Parasidian is part of the team that deals with the game's lore and knowing his love for the character, we can assume that he's Pod. Finally, we would like the return of one of the most beloved characters of the entire franchise. No, we are not talking about Clay Carmine. <coughs> we are talking about Jack the Bot. He was a loyal and useful companion during all the trilogy. Now that Baird has created sentient androids, it would be interesting if Jack had also been converted into a humanoid body. A DB Jack would be an interesting and funny buddy to take along, finally able to tell his worries on the mission. Surely he will not be happy to continue his humiliating work as a door opener, in case he was asked again. We conclude our long deepening video with just one important topic for the context of the new saga, the Wind Flares. In the pre-launch period, Rod Ferguson said several times that they were caused by Adam's ray, which created imbalances in the planet's atmosphere. During the campaign of Gears of War 4, there is a brief dialogue about the Wind Flares. Apparently, the characters don't know the exact origin of the phenomenon. They hypothesized several causes, including natural climatic imbalances and the holes in the surround crust. But in fact, the cause has not been ascertained, and we are not exactly explained the extent of the phenomenon. This is just one of the characteristic flows of the Gears of War saga. There is always a talk of global phenomena, of human race in extinction for one or the other reason, but it's never given a global vision of the planet. Speaking of the Pendulum Wars, one cannot understand the real position of the UIR to the COG. Which are the member states and how do they border? With the invasion of the Locust, we know through the novels that in some remote places surrounded by the waters like Vectis, the Grubs had not arrived. But it's not clear how far they are from Tyrus. Now that the Wind Flares have shocked Sarah, the Outer Wilds are named. But we have no idea if they are places already known as Anvegat or if they are places that are part of the main continent. We are pretty sure that the Wind Flares will continue to be a narrative and gameplay element. We wonder if a possible worsening of the climate could push humans to attempt a desperate flight to one of the two moons of Sera. In Gears 2, Ben said rumors about the Locust coming from there. Therefore, it would be interesting if Jin sent a DB and a team of soldiers to explore the satellite after a survey with positive results. This situation could also offer noticeable advances in game mechanics, not just in the story. In this case, all the features of Gears of War 4 will find the best utility. The DBs and the Fabricator would be important elements for the exploration of a new world. Moreover, we would be able to explore the true origins of the Locust and know the species from which they derive, not necessarily hostile to the protagonists. Who knows, maybe as nature sneaks into the spaceship and starts creating a new enemy army there too. 
we are finally at the conclusion of our in-depth video. We hope you enjoyed it, and we invite you to leave a comment to tell us your opinion on the topics covered. Keep following GAU series videos waiting for the E3, where we'll find out if a Gears of War chapter will be presented this year. If you want to support us, here is the instruction to make a donation to our channel, and we'll name the donators in the next video. See you soon, Gears fan! Thanks for watching!